Police arrest a man they believe is responsible for robbing a bank in Hyannis two weeks ago. Traffic should be lighter on the Sagamore Bridge for the holidays. Plus, we could soon have a second cultural district in Barnstable. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Tuesday, December 24th, 2013. I'm Sarah Mannell. Members of the Massachusetts Cultural Council will be coming to Barnstable on January 9th for a tour of Barnstable Village. The village has applied to receive a cultural district designation similar to the High Arts District. The day will begin with a roundtable discussion with municipal officials and then will head outdoors for a tour of the district. The tour will include stops at the Cape Cod Art Association, the Old Jail, Barnstable Harbor, Sturgis Library and the St. Mary's Gardens. The day will conclude with a roundtable with partners, participants and stakeholders at the county complex. Police arrest a homeless man for allegedly robbing a bank in Hyannis two weeks ago. Barnstable this morning host Sarah Colvin got an update from Police Chief Paul McDonald. Good morning everyone and welcome back to Barnstable this morning. We're just about six minutes past the top of the hour on this Tuesday morning. I'm Sarah Colvin and joining me live on the phone I welcome our Chief of Police Paul McDonald. Chief, good morning and Merry Christmas to you. Good morning Sarah, Merry Christmas to you. Chief, I want to talk about uh, some, some incidents that have happened, uh, most na namely a bank robbery and the kind of some interesting circumstances. So fill me in a little bit on, on what happened. Well, we had a bank robbery uh, two weeks back on December 17th, the Eastern Bank on Route 20 across from the airport uh, um, was, was robbed about noontime. Um, with the subsequent investigation, we were able to quickly identify the suspect, uh, a Kyle Gray, who was homeless, but we know he's from the Plymouth Duxbury area. Um, within a couple of days, we located Mr. Gray. We put him under surveillance for a couple of days while we're building probable cause and finishing, fin finishing up on the investigation of the case. And while we're doing that, we're looking into some of his background. Uh, once the warrant was issued, he was subsequently arrested. But what's a little bit different about this, I mean, bank robbery is obviously a significant crime. It carries up 20 years in state prison. Uh, Mr. Gray has a minimal um, criminal record, uh, most of it for nonviolent offenses, um, such as uh, passing bad checks and counterfeit counterfeit counterfeiting and forging a, a, uh, a document. Um, with that, we did a little more of a background, I found Mr. Gray, you know, he's a, he's a high school graduate, um, he's an Air Force veteran, he even has some uh, some college credits, and what happened is he, is he just got hung up on Oxycontin and heroin, and his life just uh, started spiraling downward, and uh, he ended up robbing a bank, so it's, a, it, it's kind of a sad case. It really is, Chief, and, and really kind of an indicator, again, of the problem that, that, that is kind of rampant uh, in our community with the, the oxys and the heroin. Uh, certainly, this isn't the only story of, uh, you know, a, a young man who has, has kind of turned to a life of crime in order to feed uh, their drug habit. Exactly. You know, just a week prior to that, another gentleman with the first name, Kyle, also, Rosalind, you know, he was uh, charged with armed robbery at Tedeschi. He's down in Yamath Road, West, at the Yama Town Line. And again, he, he lived less than a block away from the store when he robbed the store, the, uh, um, the the clerk recognized him. Even though he has face cover, they recognized him as a regular customer. They recognized him by his voice. They knew who he was. He was arrested pretty quickly. And again, it's it, it's all because of the drug addiction that they both suffer. You know, and it uh, and it and it's, it's evident of the epidemic on Cape Cod right now. Absolutely. So, Chief, is there anything that 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 can be done? I mean, obviously, you know, the, the police department has got to keep an eye on the crimes taking place. But in terms of, of prevention, do you feel like it's time to kind of, you know, maybe think about some some treatment? treatment options or, or some other ways in which to reduce uh, the, this this phenomenon? You know, the education is a huge part of it. The enforcement part of it is huge. That That's our part of it. You know, you know, taking the uh, the profitability out of it, that that's a huge part of it. But it should be, should people should start looking at it as a medical ailment, you know, an addiction, you know, similar to what alcoholism is, because it, it really is. I mean, these people, that, you know, especially this Kyle Gray, he's not a bad kid. You know, he's a nice kid. Once he was arrested, the techs were talking to him. You know, he's a, he's a gentleman. He's a, he's an educated kid, smart kid, a veteran, you know, and it's just extremely unfortunate, you know, and sending him to jail for 20 years will serve no purpose. 
you know, some type of uh, some type of different process has to be developed. You know, you know, counseling, addiction uh, counseling, and something along those lines. Absolutely. Well, Chief, uh, you know, thank you for for sharing that information. I want to ask you. I heard uh, some reports on the radio this morning uh, about a, a tragic accident that yes. happened uh, on Route 132. Certainly, I know I was out and about yesterday afternoon. Lots of people on the roads, kind of dangerous. And this was uh, unfortunately a pedestrian that was struck by a car. What can you tell me about that? This had happened at 8:50 last night, right <clears> down by the Christmas tree. Christmas tree, Christmas tree Plaza on Route 132. A 50-year-old uh, woman was crossing the street. Um, she was she was struck uh, by a vehicle traveling a southbound lane. Upon the arrival of police and rescue, they immediately started CPR. She was transported to the emergency room, but she was pronounced deceased at the at the hospital. And it's unfortunate because you're right, there were a lot of people out right in the area, the Cape Cod malls or all the malls along the 132 corridor. The traffic was extremely heavy, and try to cross 132 at that particular spot was uh, was not a wise thing to do. And unfortunately, uh, the young lady passed away. Absolutely, and, and certainly, you know, it serves as a reminder of people to, to be cautious and, you know, don't try to attempt to cross those busy roads uh, without crosswalks or traffic signals. Right, you have to cross with the crosswalks, you know, with the traffic signals, you have to dress appropriately. You know, last night, last night, obviously, at 8.50, it was dark, it was raining, heavy traffic, you know, the visibility was poor. Um, you know, the individual has not been cited yet, but the investigation has continued. Uh, we won't know exactly what happened until the uh, reconstruction officers are finished with their job. Indeed, and of course, uh, Tonight, Chief, uh, Christmas Eve, tomorrow Christmas. We've got New Year's Eve coming up next week. Um, tell me a little bit, or if you have any safety tips for people, if they're going to be perhaps traveling to holiday parties or even safety in their own homes. Well, the, well, the, the biggest the biggest thing, just don't, don't overly indulge it. Indulge it. By all means, you know, get a, get a sober driver, get a sober driver, you know, plan what you're doing, where you're going to go, what you're going to do, how many people are going to be with you, and just use your head. Absolutely. Well, Chief, a Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will talk with you again uh, next year. Good talking to you. Thanks, Chief. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Chief of Police, Paul McDonald, of course, joining us as he does uh, each and every Tuesday. Morning. Work on the Sagamore Bridge will not take place over the holidays. The Army Corps of Engineers tells us the painting contractor will not work on the Sagamore Bridge during the two weeks of Christmas and New Year's. All travel lanes will be open through January 5th, 2014. After the holidays, work on the Sagamore Bridge with lane restrictions will continue through the winter, weather permitting Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Well, if you have a styrofoam that needs recycling, your chance to do so is coming up. A special styrofoam recycling event is being held at the Barnstable Transfer Station on Saturday, January 11th. Accepted items include takeout containers, foam egg cartons, hot coffee cups, and packing blocks. All acceptable items should be labeled with a number 6 recycling symbol. For further details, you can visit the town's website. For Barnstable Today, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm Sarah Mannell. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays from all of us at Sandy Neck, Neck Beach. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Town Manager's Office. Happy Holidays from the Growth Management Department. Best wishes and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone. Happy Holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas! Hello, I'm Richard Ulrich, the Town's Energy Coordinator. And I'm Marcia King, the Town's Grant Coordinator. And we're here wishing you a very Happy Holiday Season! Hi, this is Bud Brielt. I'm the airport manager at the Barnesville Municipal Airport in Hyannis. And I want to wish everyone a happy uh, holiday season and a Merry Christmas uh, from the airport and from all of our employees and from all of our uh, air carriers here at the airport. Wishing everybody a Merry Christmas from the Town Council office and a Happy New Year. Hi, this is Mark Ells, Assistant Town Manager. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. From the clerk's office to all of you, happy, happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> we wish you a healthy new year. Hi, everybody. I'm Lingo Beal from the staff here at Barnstable this morning, wishing you a very, very Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season, and a happy 2014. Merry Christmas, everyone, and happy new year. And uh, may the uh, winds be uh, behind you all the way. When can you say uh, Go ahead. Say Merry Christmas. Go ahead, speak. Can you speak? <laughs> Happy Holidays. Happy New Year.
This is Tom Lynch, town manager for the town of Bonsville, and I want to wish everyone the best of holidays. 2013 was an exciting year here around Town Hall. We're looking forward to another productive year in 2014. May the coming year bring you health and happiness.